So this time, let's say we want to make a query where I want to see all of my patient information, well, not all of my patient information, I want to see uh, who my patient was and what did they come in for. Again, that's because I want to see, I want to see my patient information that I have in my patient table, and I want to see my visit information that I have in my visit table. They're linked currently with that patient ID, but that's not very beneficial. Notice again, I have to uh, say, all right, well, who is 22500? I'd have to go over here to the patient table, 22500. Oh, well, what do you know? That's me. <laughs> but again, I had to run through that process and go to two different tables just to see that. What we can do is we can actually join tables. Oh, tell me more. If we come to our create tab and we go to our query design section again, this time instead of just adding one of our tables, I'm going to add my patient table and I'm going to add my visit table. Notice because we made that connection, we made that relationship earlier on, it automatically kind of reestablishes that on our end. Now again, like I said, I want to look at uh, basically my patient information and then when they came in and for what. So I can say, uh, we'll say I'm going to look at my first name. I'm going to look at my last name. Why not? Just for the sake of practice, we're also going to look at our phone number. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at my uh, patient information. Now, I do not need to actually double click on patient ID. Again, it's already made that established link. That that patient ID has to be related to some record in my patient table. So I'm going to just come in here and I'm going to say visit date and then I'm going to go with reason. So now what I'm saying is give me the first and last name of the patient, their phone number for whatever reason, and why and when they came to our clinic. And so if I run this query, you see I get exactly that. I get every time uh, any particular person has shown up. I've only shown up because I had a migraine once uh, in November of this year, which hasn't happened yet. Uh, but if I keep going down, you see, oh, well, Matthew. Matthew uh, Weiss, or Weiss has shown up a few times. Uh, he showed up for his uh, initial diagnosis, but then we did a glucose check on him twice. So it's a way for me to kind of now see, oh, okay, all right, here's where uh, we're getting a little bit more uh, collected information. Now, I want to go ahead and uh, make a little change. You know, right now it's just kind of ordered willy nilly. But if I click again on my view section, I want to actually view these in chronological order now. Why? Because I want to just see. And if you take a look at these queries again, we were dealing with criteria, show, we've already worked on, but sort. Sort, as you can kind of imagine what it will do, is it'll allow me to kind of select how my data is viewed kind of in a chronological order. Uh, and for example, with my date, again, you notice there's a little square there. If I click in there, I get a drop down menu. That drop down menu allows me to say it's not sorted, ascending, or descend. If I, accept, if I select ascending order and run this, you'll notice that we start at uh, November 9th, 2015, but as we keep on going down, November 9th, November 10th, November 12th, 17, 17, 18, so we're going from sort of the uh, soonest to the latest. If we swap it the other way around, we switch it from ascending to descending order, we run through it. Now we see, oh, we're dealing with April 18th, 2016, April 15th, 2016, April 15th, April 14th. So I can just sort my data a little bit more. Now, one of the things I'm going to do since I'm working with uh, dates, I'm going to put it back to ascending, but I want to add in another criteria. Again, I don't want to deal with too much of the future just yet. Uh, so I want to actually look and say uh, who has who has come to the clinic uh, this year in 2015. So how do I say that? Well, I can't just come in here and, okay, how, what does it mean to be here before 2016? Or, well, if I do 1, 1, slash 2016, and I run this, 
I don't get anything. Well, the idea is the same that we saw with Hartford. If I type Hartford, what's going to happen is I get every record that had the city as Hartford. Not really helpful uh, with dates because this is saying show me every date that is, or every visit that was on New Year's Day. However, what we can do is we can actually start to use what are known as our comparison operators. You remember in your math class, you probably learned about the, uh, let's see, that looks like the less than sign and the greater than sign. Uh, these guys, we can actually use those here as well. And so I can say something like less than 1 slash 1 slash 2016. And what that's going to say explicitly is make it appear uh, before uh, January 1st, 16. Now you're noticing that I have some pound symbols around my date. Well, that's Access's way of demonstrating this is how I'm, I'm talking about numbers, not text. I'm dealing with dates, not numbers uh, or text. It's just its way of making sure that it deals with dates properly just make sure to keep them in there. When I run this this time, what will happen is now I get all of my records that are happening before the new year. If I had swapped it around and I had said instead, fine. If I had said greater than 1, 1, 2016, and I run it, now I'm getting everything that happened after that, I'm having everything that's happened in this 2016 new year. So it allows for me to just mess around with my data a little bit more, a little bit more criteria, if you will.